Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. Okay, today I like to talk about the C++20 feature the spaceship operator or consistent comparisons or three-way comparison operator. Here's a very um, simple example. I have a class point which has two data members X and Epsilon and I use a defaulted version of the spaceship operator as you can see it in line number seven. This is all I need um, aside from the header compare in line number one and the compiler will do its magic. In line 10 and 11, I create two objects of my type point A and B with the values 2, 3 and 3, 3. In the end, in line number 13, I simply use a static assert and compare whether A is less than B. And if I now transform this, we can see a couple of things. So first of all, we can see that the compiler that uses the type of the spaceship operator for us. Because we have two integer types here, the resulting type is stood strong ordering. The second thing we can see is that the compiler kindly provides an equals operator for us in line number eight. Um, we haven't asked for that. The compiler does provide one for us. And the next interesting part is below here where we use the comparison where we use the spaceship operator to compare whether A is less than B, there we can see that a less than operator from the namespace stood gets invoked and this uses the result of a direct call to our spaceship operator A dot operator spaceship in parens B. And this less than operator compares you know, obviously this result to zero. So this is all magic that happens behind our backs and makes the thing as simple as it is working. There are a couple of things um, which we can also get. So for example, if I make this a float, um, my X or double, whatever you prefer, and if I retransform this, then we can see that a compiler automatically choose a different type this time it's stood partial ordering as return type for the spaceship operator because float numbers are not follow a strong ordering pattern. So you have values in there like nan or infinite, which are not really strong um, comparable. So this is the reason for that. So talking about the spaceship operator, there is some additional thing and I demonstrate this using the equals operator here in line number seven. I totally got rid of the spaceship operator for now because it's it's not relevant. I now have my class point and I instantiate a variable b with it and initialize it with the numbers three comma three. And this time in line number seven and eight, I provided an implementation for the equals comparison. And the idea is that we can with the equal compare here check whether both members X and Epsilon are equal to our right hand side value, which we compare our point to. And if we now switch the standard for a moment back from C++20 to C++17 and compile this thing, we see that in fact it does not compile. And it doesn't because the compiler tells us this, that in line number 13, it doesn't know how to compare our integer three to our point struct. This is essentially what it tells us. And what we usually have to do here is to write another compare equals compare function, usually in the global namespace or a friend version of um, what we are seeing here in line number seven to make this code compile. But we are now in C20. And the cool thing here is aside from the spaceship, um, the compiler got a new ability, and this is called operator rewrites. First of all, we can now see that this code compiles, and if you look at the static asserts below here, 
then we can see that in both cases the compiler calls point operator equal and compares that to 3, regardless in which way I wrote the comparison on the left. So line number 13 now compiles because the compiler is able to simply flip over or switch um, 3 and B and with that it finds a way to compare those two operands. So this is something in addition to Spaceship which um, helps us to write simply less code because the compiler can do this neat trick for us. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.